so I was going to wear these glasses, but I can see the link ring light glare in there. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you all for tuning in. I am back. I've been gone for about a month, a few weeks. I don't know what it's been, but I want to first of all say thank you to each and every one of you who um, just have been subscribing, still watching, commenting still. I still get notifications. I'm like, oh, okay, people are still there. So I really appreciate like all the support, honestly. I think I've gotten more support on YouTube in the past couple months since I've started than I have on any social media ever. Um, so yeah, thank y'all. Um, I have been working so much nonstop that I haven't really been able to put a lot of time, devote a lot of time to my YouTube channel, but I'm hoping to just try to give you as much as I can, but that's why I'm going to be kind of transitioning the way I do my videos here. Instead of doing YouTube reviews for these different shows, I'm just going to kind of bring you different news and updates about the different shows, because what I found is that my ass just can't, I can't keep up with doing three, four reviews a week because it's not just me popping up a camera and talking about these shows. I have to sit down and watch them, pause, make notes, pause, make notes, and then, you know, edit the video, upload it, all that different stuff, make cover art. There's a lot that goes into these different YouTube channels. And if I was one of these um, YouTubers who was making good money, off of YouTube, best believe that would be my job. I would just be doing this every day. I would give you all the reviews you want. I would give you all what you want, but that's just not realistic right now for me. However, I'm gonna try to give you all the tea, give you the scoop on everything that's going on. And this um, this video is gonna be about the Real Housewives all across the board. I'm not gonna try to draw it out and make it really long, but we're just gonna touch each city in the country, outside of the country, um, but we're gonna to touch each city and I'm gonna tell you what's going on, who's in, who's out, what's going on with the new season and all that good shit. Let me know in the comments what kind of videos y'all may wanna see in the future. Um, I'll try to do reviews. Do y'all wanna, do you like the idea of different news and updates? Just let me know, I'm receptive to whatever. Um, so we're gonna start, just like if we're looking at the US map, we're just gonna start up in New York um, you know, if you watched this past season of New York, I even said in some videos before, I didn't do reviews for this past season because I watched like the three fourths of it and I just couldn't get into it. Um, I, I got into it. I liked it. I'm not, don't get me wrong. It wasn't that bad. However, I just couldn't, it didn't keep me interested the whole time. Um, so the past season didn't do really well with ratings. A lot of people were blaming it on new cast member Ebony K. Williams because she brought up a lot of different uh, racial conversations that challenged some of the different white women in the group. They didn't like talking about it. And a lot of people say they didn't like watching it. Um, did I think she brought it up a lot on the show? Yes, but I didn't mind hearing about it some. Did I think she was like constantly bringing it up? Yes, however, that's her and that's what she is. But I'm, I, want, I want them to give her another chance and I want to see what she can bring in the future seasons. Um, as of right now, New York is on a brief kind of hold, kind of like how OC and um, what's the other one, Atlanta, they they both have kind of been on this hold while they figured out while they figure out how to maneuver who they're going to cast, what they're going to do for the next season, because the ratings in all those cities have been down. The ratings have been down in across the franchise altogether, but. Atlanta, OC, and New York, particularly their last season, really went down. And some of the ladies blame it on COVID, but I don't know if we could use that because, you know, all these other cities were airing during COVID and they've done well. And they just had good storylines to, to cling on to. Um, moving over to New Jersey. So a lot of the fans have been waiting for New Jersey. New Jersey is like, um, you know, it's one of the very beginning um cities that was birthed and a lot of people are waiting on it they love jersey um but they finished filming the season but it's not going to air until february 2022 according to jennifer aiden um the season was originally slated to air in january of 2022 but i think it got pushed back a little bit <clears throat> which makes me wonder like is that a bad thing because usually when the with these shows if they got some good content things are going to going well they're going to you know, get it on the air quick. Kind of like with Royal Housewives of Salt Lake City. The Jen Shaw stuff happened. They didn't waste time. They got that shit on the air. Um, but 
the same thing here with with Jersey. I'm wondering because all the ladies in Jersey have been like, "Oh, this is the best season yet." A lot's going down, but I'm like, "Well, why is it taking so long for it to air? Like, are they trying to piece stuff together? Are they trying to make something of nothing? Because y'all didn't really have anything go on? Because I didn't really see, you know, on Instagram, social media, a lot of times there's spoilers or there's videos from different events, and I didn't really see anything happen in Jersey this season, but. Um, we'll see. As far as I know, everybody is back. Um, the same women who've been on the season the past three or four years are back. And I think there's a new girl named Tracy that's on the se this season. I wish they would bring Danielle Staub back. Unpopular opinion. I love Danielle Staub and she makes for a good season. All right, moving out of Jersey and over to Maryland at the Real Housewives of Potomac. So the girls in the P are doing strong. They've been going strong since the beginning, since the inception of Royal Housewives of Potomac back in 2016. Um, at the beginning, I really loved Potomac. It's something about a freshman season of a Housewives show, but they've just gotten better and better and better with each season. Um, I'm interested to see what happens next season with them and with the casting and all that. Um, I don't think there should really be any major casting changes because they've gotten three new cast members in the past two seasons from Wendy, Mia, and Escala. So do we really need to bring anybody else in or is the dynamic and chemistry between the group good enough at this point? I don't know. I hope they keep Escala around. I hope they keep Wendy. I hope they keep Mia. I think the season was pretty good. Um, uh, only one that I really always wonder about is Robin, and I always will. I feel like Juan is her saving grace. Juan keeps her on this show. Um, no shade, no tea. I love Robin as far as, well, I don't love her, I don't know her, but I feel like outside of the cameras, Robin would be a really cool and sweet girl. Let me just say that, but I just don't feel like she's good for this show sometimes. She just, I feel like she just says what she thinks people want her to say. Um... Moving on down south to the ATL. So Atlanta is a city, like I was talking about a second ago, that had a major dip in ratings. And I mean a major dip. Atlanta was going from season six, they were getting like four or five million viewers. Then they were down to two million viewers like some in the last few seasons. But this previous season, they dropped down to like a million viewers an episode, which is really bad for Atlanta, like really bad. So the Bravo executives were obviously um, probably scurrying through the office, like, what are we going to do? Some people probably don't think that um, Nene is a reason why, but I feel like she's a, a, a fragment of it. I feel like there's a lot of factors as to why Atlanta had low ratings this year, but I feel like Nene definitely is a part of it because she does have a personality I'm on TV that has captivated a lot of people and she's funny and she's got tons of memes and um and also they've lost a lot of their just the the it lost the spark that it had at the begin at the beginning the authenticity a lot of reality TV now is just so what can I do for ratings what do I do for a storyline it's so strategic now it's so outlined and planned and with when these in these people's heads when they do it Versus like early reality where you just go, you didn't know what you were doing. They were walking on set because even the producers at the beginning of early reality 10, 15 years ago, they didn't even really know what they were doing producing these shows. So now I feel like it's just so different and that's why things have changed across the board with the ratings altogether. People just aren't interested in these formats like they once were because they're the same. You know, go to dinners, bring up drama, hash it out later go on a girl's trip, go to a reunion. I mean, every show has just recycled the formula and done it. And nobody's done it like Atlanta, though. However, um, Cynthia and Portia won't be returning this season. And Cynthia, I'm glad we bring, I'm bringing this up and I thought about it because she released a statement saying she was leaving the show because of her marriage and she wanted to make sure her, her marriage remained intact. No, Cynthia, you are the viewers. Everyone knows that shit is not true. And how we know it's not true is because number one, a source from Bravo released that in their contracts, they cannot say that they were fired. I believe that's what, somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but in the, in the housewives contracts, they cannot say that they were fired. Um, I think that's Bravo doing damage control on their end because they don't want, I don't know. 
either way, um, Cynthia, but then some of them have also said that they were let go, but I think it was way after their contract was over and they weren't on the show anymore. But Cynthia, we all know that at the end of the day, they let you go. And I don't think it was because Cynthia was just boring, because a lot of people say she is, but Cynthia's an Alabama girl, and we ain't boring, but I love her, and I think she's had um, a long run on the show, but I did feel like we had really seen everything that we could see from Cynthia, because yeah, you got married to Mike, but I mean... What are we going to just watch you guys' relationship for, for, for years to come? We've seen the modeling agency. We've seen Noelle go off to college and grow up. We've seen her divorce Peter. We've seen her open businesses, all of this stuff. And also, it it's costing Bravo a lot of money. They're losing ratings. This is a business, people. They're losing lots of money because the ratings have dipped. So now they're like, okay, we've lost a lot of money. Well, Cynthia's making... $2.5 million. I don't know. That's, I'm just throwing a figure out. I know Nene used to make something around that. But I don't know what Cynthia makes. Um, I'm surprised they didn't let Candy go because she's been there so long. I feel like because Candy and Kenya have been like such favorites on the show, that's what kept them on. They invested more in them. Cynthia's never really been a favorite of anybody. She's just been like a neutral cast member that people, you know, they love her, they hate her, whatever. Um... So, Portia, now, she said she was not returning. Now, I believe Portia, that's voluntarily on her own. They, Bravo would have been a fool not to ask Portia to come back with her storyline with Dennis. Um, however, what they did, I guess they negotiated with her and said, if we can't have you here, can we at least have you here and give you your own spinoff? And Portia knows going into her own spinoff that it's just going to be her and her family and she's not going to have to worry about people coming for her um, marriage as much as she would if she was on Housewives. Um, she's got a spinoff called Portia's Family Matters. There's a trailer that's came out and you probably find it on YouTube. I'll try to post the link in the um, description. Um, Marlo finally got a peach. A lot of people are excited about that. I'm excited about that um, because I want to see more into Marlo's life. People's like, well, we've already seen inside her life. No, we haven't. I want to see more of Marlo's townhome. I've always thought her townhome was beautiful. I want to see more of that. I want to see how she handles her nephews. I want to see more of her distant family. Maybe the sugar daddy who bought the townhome will pop through and we'll see him. I want to see all that. Marlo's got a lot and we don't give her credit for, and I'm ready to see that. So I think it was a smart decision to finally give her a peach and I think it was smart because they knew that they know that's what the viewers want, and that's gonna bring some of those ratings back in. So I'll give you that, Bravo. Um, Sheree is back, another smart decision. They have not brought Sheree back for the third time now, third or fourth, if she wasn't a fan favorite and loved. Sheree is another one kind of like Nene. She was an OG, she's got a lot of memes, she's got a lot of little one-liners, people love her. And I love watching Sheree. Um, we've seen her through her ups. We've seen her through her downs. She's another one that has a beautiful home. I've passed by her home in Atlanta once. And you literally have to like put your head out the window to look up at Chateau Sheree. It's huge. Um, so I'm excited to see if her and Tyrone are still together. What the Chateau looks like on the inside now. What she's doing for work. What she's doing in her love life. Like I'm ready to see it all. Um, of course, like I said, Candy, Kenya, and Drew will all three be back. I was glad to see Drew because I liked her. I don't feel like she really had a good first season because of everything that was going on with her husband and other things. So maybe we get to see Drew in a better, um, better circumstances this season. And then there's a newcomer, uh, Sanya Richard Ross. She's an Olympic champion. She was in the Olympics and she'll be joining. So that will be interesting to have someone fresh and new in the group that's not like super famous or anything. Like, hey, we might try to get these actors or singers or like people that are known. Sonya's not really that known, at least not to me. So um, I looked, checked out her Instagram and she looks like she'd be a good fit. Okay, moving down a little further south, are you ready to feel the rush, baby? Because Miami is back. And when I tell y'all, Miami was probably my favorite franchise, my favorite Real Housewives show city next to Atlanta. For me, it's like Atlanta, Miami, Dallas. Those were like my three favorite. Um, and a lot of people, I didn't like Miami and Dallas for some reason, but Miami is back. It went on hiatus or they canceled it or they didn't cancel it. They just said, um, 
they just ended Miami in 2014 after three seasons because they said the ratings were super low. However, the ratings that Miami was getting back then are what the ratings that the girls are getting now. Um, so they brought Miami back because there was a lot of people, including myself, on social media wanting them to return and they're putting it on their um, sister streaming app called Peacock. So NBC Universal, who owns Bravo, owns Peacock. And it's kind of like a Netflix for Bravo. And you can watch all kind of stuff on there. And it will be airing in December. Peacock is free for the most part. Some content I think you have to have a paid subscription for. I'm not sure if Royal Housewives of Miami will be included in the free or the paid. We'll just have to wait and see. It's about a month away. So I'm really excited about that. I don't know the official date. I just know that it's returning in December, according to cast member Larsa Pippen. Um, uh, uh, speaking of cast members, the returning OG cast members full time for this new season of Real Housewives of Miami will be Alexia. And I don't want to butcher your name, Alexia. Forgive me because I love you and, and, and Peter. You're in um, Frankie, your son's. Um, so I don't want to butcher Alexia's last name. But the blonde Cuban OG, she will be back. Lisa Hochstein, who was married to Lenny, the boob god in Miami. Um, they have the beautiful home on Star Island. She will be back. Fun fact, I saw Lisa outside of Barry's boot camp in Miami about a year ago, I think. Sometime, yeah. Um, no, back in January. This January, uh, January 2021. Um, and then Larsa Pippen. Now, a lot of you may think Larsa Pippen, she was only a part of the show for one season. That was the very first season of Real Housewives of Miami. And that season wasn't the greatest season out of the three. Um, they were just trying to figure out, I guess, what to do with it. And um, Larsa was cast and she looks completely like a different person now. But those three are the OGs that are full-time. Now, a lot of you may be wondering, where's Leah? Where's Adriana? Where's Marisol? Adriana and Marisol will be back, but they were demoted to friends of. And a lot of people, fans took to social media to express their concerns about that. I included was like, what the fuck? Why is Adriana not full-time? Like, she was... She was like one of the OGs with the biggest personalities who really brought the drama. If you remember, she punched Joanna Krupa in the face at Leah Black's or at Lisa's Halloween party on season two, one of the best housewife seasons of all time. Um, but I thought about it. I'm like, why was Adriana demoted? And I heard, according to some sources that I've been talking to. So Marisol, I wasn't surprised that she was a friend of because I mean Marisol I loved her but she was kind of like a Cynthia of the group so I wasn't surprised that she was a friend and I don't think she really has much going on in her life now that Mama Elsa unfortunately passed away um well Marisol did get married so that would have been interesting to see but how many weddings have we seen on Housewives um who are we talking about Adriana. So Adriana, I was like, what in the hell? So Adriana is not with Frederick anymore. You remember she was married to a guy named Frederick. She married him on the show. Um, she's no longer with him. I think her son is now graduated high school, gone off to college. So I don't think Adriana, and from what I heard as well, had a lot going on in her life right now. She wasn't really doing anything. I think she was just shocked when they come to her and was like, hey, we're bringing the show back. Do you want to join? So I don't think she really had much going on. And if you think about it, this show was filmed about 10 years ago. So she's not the same person she was 10 years ago. She may not be the Brazilian spitfire that we once loved. Who's going to, who's going to, you got a limp penis and scream and punch you in the face if she has to and do all that shit. She may not be doing that anymore. We don't know. We haven't seen the footage, but we'll see when the show airs, maybe why she was demoted to a friend. We'll get more of an insider on that. And then Leah Black, who was like the queen of Miami, the mayor of Miami, um, she apparently turned it down. They, I think they asked her to be a part of it. She said she couldn't because she lives in L.A. during the time they were filming. And then they wanted her to make a cameo, and she turned it down as well because she just didn't feel like it was right. I respect that, but I'm hoping that Leah will come back next season because she was my favorite on Miami. Leah's my, one of my favorite housewives of all time, actually, top five. All right, moving over a little 
Staying in the South, though, the Real Housewives of Dallas. If you remember, I made a video on Dallas and what really went down with that. If you want more in-depth on what's going on with Dallas, check out my previous video about um, the Real Housewives of Dallas. Um, but it was officially canceled. Well, I wouldn't say canceled. Some of the wives, like Deandra, was saying that it's on hiatus. What I think is going to happen is that they're going to eventually bring it back but put it on peacock like they did in miami because that show was so cheap to make dallas is one it like it was, was a really sh cheap show to make and that was that comes straight from a source leanne Locken, who was on the show for seasons one through four an og probably the only main reason the show lasted as long as it did i interviewed her by the way if you want more on dallas as well check out my interview with leanne Locken that i did about a year ago she shares a lot of behind the scenes juice, a lot of stuff we don't know about the show, like what they were making, all that stuff. Check out my podcast, Damien After Dark. Um, it's on all podcasting platforms and you can check out my interview with Leanne there. Um, so yeah, Dallas, I think I'll be back, but not soon. I think it's going to be some years when they get the casting right again and they figure out what's really going on and how they can produce a show that the fans are going to love. I would love if they would bring Leanne and Tiffany from season one back kind of bring, you know, a few, kind of like they did Miami, bring a few of the OGs that were popular back. Um, honestly, Dallas, I feel like their downfall was when they brought Carrie Brittingham on in season four. Um, I think that's what happened. Carrie, to me, like, she, not, I, I, don't come for me. And Carrie's another one that I feel like would probably be a cool chick outside the show, but she also ruined Housewives of Dallas for me. Because season four, she came on. The intention was to take Leanne down. They did it. It worked. And Leanne did help take herself down with some of the stuff that she said, yes. But then they go on to season five, and they realize, oh, the target's gone. The villain's gone. We have nobody to fight with. And they were literally trying to pick fights. And it was so obvious on season five that I didn't even finish watching it. I couldn't. I, didn't, I think I stopped like right before the finale or two episodes before the finale because it was so bad um and I just had high hopes for it it was such a great show like seasons one through three and then I think after that it got a little dark and bad um but yeah I feel like Real Housewives of Dallas kind of imitated what happened with Miami Miami got canceled because there was a lot of plotting there was a lot of strategic behind the scenes stuff with the girls who were just trying to um, start fights, start dramas for rating, because they thought that's what they needed to do. And that's what happened with Dallas as well. Carrie, Deandra, all, like, it was all just bad, bad, bad. All right, moving over to Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Um, I was so excited for this season of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, which y'all probably saw in um, previous videos. Just a second, y'all, I gotta hit this. Um, and I've enjoyed this season of Salt Lake City thus far. They're in their second season. Um, however, I was expecting a little bit more, but I feel like Bravo hoodwinked us a little bit because they hyped this trailer up, making you think that it's the season's a lot about Jen's arrest. So you think, okay, maybe the arrest is going to go down like episode three or four in the beginning but we've gotten to like episode eight or nine and they haven't even gotten to the arrest so I feel like they hoodwinked us a little bit they tricked us into thinking like like I think they didn't have a lot of drama in the beginning so they're like okay we can rely on Jen's arrest to get the viewers in which worked and they did have a lot of drama between Angie and between Jen Meredith and Lisa and I've been enjoying the season don't get me wrong I just feel like it was overhyped a little bit I even overhyped it because I was so excited but we're about to get into Jen's arrest. I heard from a um, source that the season is 20 episodes. I thought it was going to be like 12 or 13 because usually in the second season, you don't get that many episodes until you can prove. But Salt Lake proved their worth, so they got 20 episodes this season. So we're going to get like 10 more episodes of the Jen Shaw arrest drama. It's just about to get good, so hold on and buckle up. Um... Let's see. And for the future of the show, I'm interested to see what they do with casting next season because there's like a 80 to 90% chance that Jen's going to be in prison. Um, we'll just see what happens. So they're going to have to find someone to come in and replace her because we need a good antagonist. 
like Jen. Um, the only thing they have right now close to that, I would say, is like Lisa. But Lisa, you know, she likes to throw the knife and then try to hide it behind her back. But I like her, though. Um, over in OC, um, there's a new season about to come out. Uh, my trailer is supposed to drop. You know, they brought back Heather Dubrow. OC did really bad in ratings last year as well. And they ended up cleaning house, getting rid of Kelly Dodd, um, getting rid of Bronwyn, and getting rid of newcomer. Um, I couldn't think of her name. The new girl that came, the blonde, last year. They got rid of all three of those. I wish they could have got the blonde, the new girl, maybe another season. She only got one shot. But they brought back Emily, Gina. They're bringing back Heather Dubrow, which I don't understand the hype about. Like, I don't get that. But I don't get what's so great about Heather. But I'm going to give it a chance. Um, just like some say they don't understand... They don't get the hype about Emily and why they brought Emily back. But I enjoy Emily. I actually like her. And I think there's like three new girls. Two or three new girls. So, OC is going to be really different this season. Um, it's supposed to be premiering in the next month or so, I think, before Jersey. So, it, it'll be premiering before Jersey comes. Um, and, you know... OC last year got a lot of outrage just from Kelly Dodd and her different political opinions and views and things she was saying about masks and vaccines and stuff. And then Bronwyn with her whole lesbian love affair and the way she was treating her husband and children, all that stuff. Like, it was just hard to watch for people, so OC tanked. So it'll be a different this year without with having three of those women gone. Be interesting to see what happens. Um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, we just came off a reunion. I was covering episode to episode of Beverly Hills before I had to um, take my little leave of YouTube for a minute. Um, but what did you all think of the season of Beverly Hills? I thought it was pretty good. The reunion was, it was good, but it was a little disappointing. I don't know if it needed to be four parts. Um, but Andy asked all the questions that we wanted to hear. I feel like Erica had thought about everything she was going to say before she got there. She had a meeting with her lawyers. They thought about everything she was going to say. Hey, it is what it is. Um, but I'm interested to see what the next season is going to hold. Yeah, who's going to be the new people? I've seen there's a new girl in the mix. I saw her on Instagram the other day, but I forgot her name. Somebody who comes from a lot of money. Um, I'm interested to see the dynamics of friendships with Erica now, like what's going to happen with the case with Tom, what's going to happen with her, her love life, all those different things. So Beverly Hills, they've done great in ratings this season. We'll have to see what's going to happen next year with them. They've already started filming. They started filming as the reunion was airing, which is a good sign. So um, I guess we'll be seeing them maybe next summer for the new season. So since the Real Housewives of Dallas is gone, there's a new RHOD in town, and that is the Real Housewives of Dubai. And he announced the other day on Good Morning America, I believe it was, that there's a new installment to the Real Housewives franchise, which is the Real Housewives of Dubai. A lot of fans weren't for it. Some were. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see, but I'm kind of confused on how this will go down because the Real Housewives are messy. And Dubai is not the United States, and their laws are very different from ours. So I'm curious to see how they're going to play this out with bringing camera crews around and drunk women who are screaming and fighting and financial issues and cheating and allegations and all that. I just don't see it happening in Dubai, but I'm going to give it a chance. Um, Caroline Stanbury, which was a fan favorite from Ladies of London, if you remember, that was on Bravo for like three seasons. She is going to be a part of the cast. Cosmopol Cosmopolitan Magazine leaked the cast, um, then deleted it later, but they leaked all six cast members. You can go online and see that. It's on Instagram as well. What do y'all think about The Real Housewives of Dubai? Would you have rather had a different city in the States? Or do you want to see Dubai? I will say that there's a lot of wealth in Dubai. So we're going to get a lot. We're going to get rich from these women. They're going to give Beverly Hills a run for their money. They're going to make Beverly Hills look like the real housewives of motherfucking Timbuktu. Okay? Um. Also, don't forget, if you're a fan of all these girls, of all these different cities, The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip airs this month on Peacock. 
same place that The Real Housewives of Miami is airing. Now, The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip takes your favorite housewives from all cities across the Housewives franchise and takes them on a Ultimate Girls Trip vacation. Your favorites like um, Kenya, Teresa, Cantus Lamb, Alyssa Gorga, Cynthia Ramona, and Kyle will be on this first season. Apparently, it's going to be a series, and they're going to have different seasons with different housewives of favorites. So this is just a way to freshen up the franchise, I think, and give us something new. So I'm excited. This is like an all-star thing, and it's going to premiere this month on Peacock. Which Housewives CD do y'all want to see next? You know, Bravo's kind of wanting to freshen up this whole Housewives thing since it's getting a little stale. And some of the seasons, or some of these shows have been around 10, 15 years now. They're wanting to give us new seasons. So um, what do y'all want to see? Some of y'all say you want to see Chicago. I've seen. I would like to see another Southern staple since Dallas is gone now. So maybe the Real Housewives of Nashville, New Orleans, Las Vegas, San Francisco, Put in the comments below, I want to hear from you. What do you think about the, the cast changes, the different things that are going on um, with the cities? What do you think about everything that I talked about? I want to hear from you below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I promise I'll try to be back a lot sooner than I was last time. I love you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.